This is a horror game podcast. It is meant for mature audiences. It may contain shocking revelations, violence, and sexual themes. Viewer discretion is advised. fellow investigators and welcome back to our video podcast into the darkness where my friends and i will be playing the call of cthulhu role-playing game i'm your host tom Rayley. we continue with our campaign world war cthulhu london it was written by matthew sanderson and scott dorward this scenario is entitled captive audience our keeper of arcane lore is matthew sanderson and this is episode seven our recap will be given by me as my character davidge green so without any further delays Let's continue our journey into the darkness. <clears throat> Before there was light, there was chaos. And chaos was a dance. The light created an illusion, and the illusion was us. But all the while, in the background, the dance went on. Sometimes people past the curtains and they saw the dance. Sometimes they started dancing and they couldn't stop like murmurations in the fabric of the space-time continuum. The compulsion of chaos and chaos is yellow. Around and around they went and sometimes they were in London like a whirlpool, they were pulled down. It pulls you down. The meter of the dance was madness. Tempo, tempo. It eats its way into you, and it opens you up like a door. And the king in yellow reaches from the other side. We, we have to stop the dance. We have to thwart the players in the shelter of Piccadilly Hotel, at the bottom of the world, where fire rains down and the earth quakes. May the earth swallow it all up. Maybe that will stop the dance, or at least slow it up a bit. We have all been here before. Twirl to the left, twirl to the right. The orchestra breathes fitfully the music of the spheres. Mimes in the form of God on high mutter and mumble low, and hither and thither fly they that are mere puppets that come and go, at the bidding of vast formless things that move the scenery to and fro. Out! Out are the lights! Hi, thank you very much, the Conqueror Worm. <clears throat> so, last time we had you all discussing uh, various options as to what to do to tackle the situation. Uh, to recap, it is still the evening of the 9th of February, so it's a Sunday. Uh, the target date, you know, when the proverbial is going to hit the fan is Wednesday the 12th. You're still in that uh, room above the bookstore just off Trafalgar Square. What are you going to do? I think I remember now someone suggested flooding the basement, and I think that that's a pretty good idea. So maybe we should consider that. That that was definitely one option that was uh, that was considered. That the, when you went down there to examine the base, uh, the bomb shelter, there were uh, there were pipes that ran across the ceiling, and one or more of those would definitely be water pipes. So water will definitely flood in there if you were to break the right pipe. What if 
they can just perform the play somewhere else. Does it have does it have to be there? Why are they choosing that spot? Because they tried it before? Yes, they're inclined to repeat the same thing that their predecessors have have done as part of the ritual. So it has to be in that area because that's where the old performance was uh, done in the past. So we have a significant landmark here. If we can deny access to it, then that's obviously a good thing. I don't imagine that they'd perform the play in scuba gear if we do flooded. Especially as it hasn't been invented yet. What if we just hired a band to play music instead and nobody wanted to hear any silly old play? Alternatively, we could just collapse the bunker. Except that might destroy the whole hotel and there's other people staying in the hotel. Yes, and it's an extreme uh, method, but it would certainly work. They wouldn't be able to occupy the same space as rubble. We could plant a bomb and it would just look like the hotel got hit. Okay, if we were to do that, how would we minimize casualties? I don't know. Maybe a smoke bomb. Something that would just make it... I don't know. Uh, They're down there because they're trying to be safe from the bombings above. Uh, Well, the... um, I'm assuming the bunker wouldn't be occupied during the day, only when it's needed at night. Right. Yes. And you'll recall that it's kept locked under normal circumstances. And uh, when we got there, we found that someone had tried to break in, but we could attempt it perhaps more successfully. I'm still interested in the possibility um, because we do have the hotel uniforms available to us. If a couple of our militarily functional members, I'm looking at you, Godel and Crochet, if you wanted to pretend to be room service and pick them off one by one before Wednesday even arrives, then they can't very well put on a performance. I mean, we, you're talking about like a full sale, a full scale assault on what? Some one of the top floors where the wedding party is booked. I love that idea. I personally, am not a fan uh, unless we have more uh, manpower. Well, remember, there's probably not really any kind of wedding party. Well, while I understand that, how are we going to justify sending in like a a special weapons team to the top floor and have gunfire? How are we going to explain that away? Well, I think the idea was you and uh, Crochet going in with trays with large silver taurines on the top of it saying, Room service, and then lifting that up. Pulling it back. Listen, I read the reports for your last mission. Sending two people in to do that didn't dirty work, work last. Yeah, didn't that work. didn't work. <laughs> I read That's the true. files. <laughs> but they died heroes. Damn it! That's true. <laughs> I I personally think that the flooding idea is pretty, probably our most solid one. I and also can, agree. We could also use gas as a backup plan unless we wanted to do something really proactive and blow up the basement before the date. Yeah, I don't, again, you know, the whole point of a bunker is that it's meant to resist damage. Uh, Anything sufficient to collapse the bunker under the hotel is going to have very considerable collateral damage, human and structural then flooding it is or we fill the entire thing with dirt just fill it in what if we this could is not minecraft the... <laughs> what if what if we could convince all of the people in the hotel to leave the hotel i don't know if there's reasoning with the insane well i wasn't worried about them uh, they apparently need to have some sort of audience with it 
All right. right, well, let's go along this uh, this line of thinking, Davidge. Uh, how would we convince them to leave the hotel? Well, the elite, the richest of the rich, who get access to this luxury Mel bunker. Melvin's already pretended to be an inspector. He could say there's damage to the building and it needs to be evacuated. Well, I, we were specifically pretending to be uh, working uh, for the the uh, authorities regarding the bombing prevention. We didn't, we weren't building inspectors. Uh, it would need a different pair of liars. Uh, you know, if, um, if, again, the, the thing I like about the room service approach is that we don't have to wait until the last minute Probably we only need to get graves. We don't have to kill every member of the cast. I mean, wouldn't I'd, hurt. I'd like more than two people then. But can we assume, though, that they've memorized the play? They don't need a copy of it. If they rehearsed it to the in Graves' house to the extent that they summoned an infradimensional hallway, I suspect they know their lines. Here's another line of uh, inquiry we should consider. We uh, let's say the we follow through with the room service idea. We don't even need to kill them. We just have to make them miss the window. So if we can just detain them in like a cell and wait for Wednesday to pass, and they're all in jail for temporarily, we can just release them the next day. That's true, but Graves is like an MP, right? Isn't he like a super powerful? No, he's or, quite he's well off, okay. but he's not political. Um, also, if they were detained, you'd have to, I guess, gag them very effectively, because if they were all together in the top of the hotel, they could just perform it as planned. Although you might be the only witness. I wonder if they need a particular number of people. They had quite a large audience when they did it the last time. Downstairs, I think there's room for 16 at the moment with the stage. They've expanded it slightly. You might remember, because uh, I know uh, in the real world, and for anyone looking at the timestamps between our two sessions, there's a bit of a gap. Um, going back through, uh, through your memory for what was only about a day, maybe two days in the course of play, you remember there was the socialist agitator who was waiting and kind of scouting yes. out the hotel on the other side of the road that he informed you that he was gathering a small army of folks to go and storm the bomb shelter on the Wednesday night mm -hmm. following, yeah, following the story that he'd been told. That would be the number of people that would be your large captive audience that would have been down there. So there would have been room for about 100-plus people in that basement. I wish we knew if there was a critical number required. That's a good idea. We could potentially, we don't have to kill them with guns. We could just poison them. Lethal champagne. Or like some sort of like, come on, like we're OSS, right? Don't we have the umbrella that has the little thing in it that can... <laughs> Do we not, not have that? I think the game you're looking for there is World Walker through to Cold War. Oh, <laughs> a little bit damn it. But I'm sure we could do some sort of like, you know, toxin. Does this sort of smell like Slap them and... with a flounder that's been... <laughs> exactly. Give, feed them the bad fugu. Arsenic, arsenic in their, in their champagne. Or we could even just put gas into their hotel rooms. <coughs> gas upstairs, gas the top floor. Then we that could would be go in, proactive. clean them out. Yeah. And All right. Okay. If we're going to launch a raid on this hotel room, I imagine we can do it as a two-pronged attack to increase the efficiency of it. Have people dressed as room service go in and start detaining or eliminating people. Have people from the roof rappel down and go through the windows. Ooh. Probably the more military uh, trained personnel. 
Yes, well, there's, uh, I think that if Dr. Gross and I, who were just there as inspectors for the city, were to enter as with bellhop outfits on, uh, we would fool no one. Mm -hmm. So we're not available for that. And I don't know exactly what you mean by repel, but whatever it is, I don't know how to do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm really referring to Jean-Pierre and I. Going so that through. leaves only Davidge to be room service? I, I'm sure N has people with those specialties. Mm. I, I, I think we should just <clears throat> go ahead. Also, I think the, the point of which we left the last session off was that, yeah, the, the people that would be going to be called upon to do this dangerous stuff, he's looking at the five of you. Yeah. Yeah. I think we should just go with the flooding idea. That seems like best. Flooding with the gas as a backup. What is the yeah, gas you keep freeze. referring to? Mustard gas? What do you have in mind? I was thinking like carbon monoxide. Like, don't they have like some sort of like burner in there? They have a kitchen, right? Well, they... carbon monoxide would kill everyone. Yeah, so what? God. <laughs> They're bad guys. Things. We were just talking about going through the windows and no Russian. Um, we could just I mean, give them all diarrhea. Kind of hard diarrhea. to recite lines from a play if you're not concentrating on them. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're reciting out of both ends. It's true. If we just put something even moderately nauseating in the in the kitchen in such a way that it would be delivered to the hospital to the uh, hotel in general we could reduce the audience possibly and inconvenience the performers but again what if one person uh, eat hogs salmon yeah or and someone else hogs the moose and they get sick enough to die I think that, um, uh, do I, any of you know anything about breaking into places with locked doors? I'm afraid they didn't, in my law course, didn't include any of that. I have a surprisingly adequate amount of lock picking. <laughs> yeah, Damage, maybe, 25%. Some, maybe something in true magic can help. Oh, shall I? I think you should get reading while we discuss. Yes. I don't want him to stop blinking again now. Yeah, I don't think this, this is that price. kind of a book. This is a rather well known book, though it's rather rare. Well, also, I think it's the annotations. Now, all he had to do was almost die. That's a fine point. I'll take a look. I'll see what I can find. Oh. Uh, if if Davidge and cleverly conceal a gas bomb. <laughs> if, if 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 we can get into the cellar, bust a pipe. We'd want to wait until Tuesday to make sure that it was still thoroughly out of order before the Wednesday performance. It seems promising, and it Where gives us. The and it, they'll go to a public shelter. They'll join us in the underground. Yes. Most of the hotel does anyway. We certainly hope that our uh, uh, king and yellowers don't follow us and simply perform in the underground. Maybe there's no reason why they have to do it here, but they are doing it here for, for tradition. Breaking I, I feel tradition like the ritual's not. all about repeating the same thing. So exactly, I'm I'm willing to bet that that area is significant so all right maybe we can do a little reconnaissance before we just go chewed up the place or bur bursting pipes or gassing anything let's do the room service idea but actually like, give them something complimentary of the hotel and that way we can scope out how many people are up there and what the layout is sounds good information is helpful because uh, right now we're Kind of blind. Yes, we know what the bunker looks like, but not the top floor of the hotel. Yes. Or exactly who's up there or how they're preparing. I mean, I'm sure with, when push comes to shove, we can get the 
blueprints or the layout of the top floor from the managers. Building inspection. Stuff like that. Didn't we already get the blueprints for the building. Yes, yes. you have you have yeah. had that before. Oh, I just had a really terrible but fun idea. We could go in as plumbers and then plant bombs in the toilet tank and then blow them up. <laughs> Wait until they're taking, uh, they're relieving themselves. Exactly. When you open the toilet seat, it blows up. I think ideally we want to take out the mummers and not everyone else. Taking out the entire building would solve the problem, but you'd kill a lot of innocent people. Yeah. Also, explosion of the building was tried before and failed. So I feel like explosion is the route that they want us to take. And we have to make sure they're all dead. Because if one of them gets away, they might be able to repeat this whole thing again. It's exactly. quite infectious, it seems, yes. All right, how about this? Is there a way that we can get the building manager or owner on our side? We dropped off a, a couple official documents saying, hey, maybe there's some German spies on the top floor. We need your full cooperation for us to handle this. I like that idea. Yeah, the difficulty there being, again, that uh, there's a certain deference to the very wealthy saying that there are some German spies who are pretending to be a wedding party, but it's the renowned uh, theater critic, Mr. Graves and his personal friends. They might look more closely at our identification cards than we want them to. True. Then I guess we'll have to uh, just sneak in with the bellhop uniforms. Because, once again, we need eyes in that room. Going back to True Magic, because uh, that was raised about looking through that, uh, to recap what you'd previously seen from it, and this is uh, the book that you'd be familiar with anyway, that by reputation it is a particularly nasty little book, a, a small crumbling hand-bound manuscript, nonetheless, nonetheless describable as a veritable encyclopedia of devil's law. And there are two bookmarks placed in the text. One of them, when you read between the lines, is the beginning of the incantation and the various spell requirements for summoning what is referred to as a servitor, the thing that you found in the basement. And the other one is, again, the beginnings of a series of detailed instructions as to what one needs to do to create a sacrificial blade. So a blade itself that has magical uh, magical properties. And you can see a picture of the blade being that it's a uh, typically handheld knife, probably about a foot long, with a somewhat curved, almost serpentine blade. Then, there's, then followed by lengthy details as to what you need to do to enchant it. But it would count as a magical weapon. Both of them... Either one of them, I'm not sure would... I mean, we certainly don't want to summon another one of those servitors. No. No, true, but it's just those, those are the two passages that are specifically bookmarked. Um, Do you uh, enchant my combat knife? <laughs> yeah, but why do we need an enchanted knife? In case we need it. What does the enchantment do? Does it just store magical points? Essentially, that. Or can yes. it hurt things that normally can't be hurt? That's why I said it counts as a magical weapon. Uh, yeah. So it'd be useful to have in case things go sideways. Well, it's, to actually make one, you're looking at a fairly lengthy process. Uh, from memory, also, you have to do it over a series of nights. You have to bathe it in blood. You have to make a perform a sacrifice to make uh, to make the blood offering to it. But it gives you the ability to see if you saw one of these things, you would know that's what this is. 
Uh, and it's it has to be a single metal too, as I recall, like iron or yes. silver, uh, with nothing else mixed in. Yeah, so exactly. Considering the way this blade looks, it probably doesn't count as <laughs> unmixed. Um. Well, I'll read through the rest of the book and see if there's anything. These are the two pages that are marked, but maybe there's a stop the king in yellow passage in here somewhere. I think it would be worth, um, before reading the body of the text, flipping through to read Graves's annotations specifically, yeah. in the same way that he bookmarked two things that we know he did. There may be other information that's in his hand. I'll flip through it. Uh, you can give me a roll for initial reading then, so that will be an English roll. Oh, uh, is that on here? Oh, uh, it's oh, just my. English. Yeah. What is my English? Uh, Should be equal oh, to your edge. Six. Yeah. Uh, I got 15 out of 60, which is I will spend three points to make it an extreme. Okay, no, that works. I am yeah. English. Gotcha. <laughs> right, um, give me 1d8. Uh, five. I'll take that many sanity points off you, and in return, I'll give you two points of mythos. Okay, sixty-two. I'm pretty good. And now I've got. You said two points. Two points for an initial reading. I now have twelve of Cthulhu mythos. Double figures. Hey. Right, yeah, this thing is a veritable encyclopedia of how to call forth various different entities. Um, not much by way of gods, but more minions of gods. Perfect. So like the yeah. servants of them and their, their lackeys. So this is wrapped up in, from what was at the time, you've got the uh, the contextual period. This is the, like, the height of the uh, Witchfinder trials in England. It's got... 17th century text it's written between the civil wars yeah it, it's that kind of time when you imagine matthew hopkins running across the uh the east of england burning every witch in sight and it's wrapped up in that a very pseudo christian mythology context where everything is referred to as god devil or devils demons mm -hmm. etc but there are lots of lots of variations there on yeah these are Lots of what mechanically you would uh, refer to as summon spells or summon bind, but they're entities. There's like very few gods. There's not really anything much you're seeing apart from the dagger spell, uh, the enchant sacred, um, enchant sacrificial dagger that looks like it's offensive. There seems to be something that he's drawn upon mainly for rather than its magical ability, but more what it can tell you about what these creatures know and what their what the potential usefulness is of calling them. And while he hasn't defaced the book by writing in the margins, I mean, that's what he said, there's there's various reprehensible book criminals out there that do uh, do such things. I think you've got the uh, the fake, well, the fake identity of a certain Mr. Craig that he hasn't written anything in the margins, but the the sheer amount of not damage to the paper, but definitely the amount of times that the particular section has been gone through, you can tell from the way it's uh, the way the book's been held. It's not been held by someone with gloves. He has manually flicked through this thing quite repeatedly. Is around the section regarding the servitor of the outer gods. So he's specifically interested to know what that particular being knows, what it can teach you, what the benefits would be for calling it. So this is this seems to be part of a in wider scale. This seems to be part of a jigsaw puzzle of a much bigger picture that's being built, but it's still a useful component. But you're not getting the whole context. I'm wondering if any of the summon bind spells have anything to do with flame entities because i've already got some fire mm -hmm. magic don't bring down any more of those nasty little bright things 
<laughs> no, and thankfully there's nothing. There's no crossover there, so you're not finding anything about fire vampires. Although the word vampire does come up, uh, so there is the call forth the spirit of the air, which is it sounds like something vampiric that this thing would uh, would summon because there's definitely talk about this thing sucking your blood. Uh, other mm -hmm. things that are very much winged again, so coming down from the darkness of the sky above or bringing up darkness from below. But yeah, no fire. It doesn't sound like so. It sounds like we're going to end up, we cause more trouble than we, you know, have to deal with afterwards. Besides, I don't think that N would really appreciate us uh, summoning up a, an air vampire or anything like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, yeah, N has said that blowing the place up because this is a high class establishment wouldn't go too, down too well. But mass murder would not go down too well, and definitely summoning up a mythos entity in the middle of uh, the middle of high class London would also not go down very well. <laughs> well, if we're going to just if we're trying to just disrupt the performance, then the water flood might work really well, and it doesn't have to kill anyone; it just has to occur. Before they start the play, and then they have to evacuate everyone, and they can't do the play. We need to have N's best mathematicians calculate the the rate of flow and the volume of the bunker <laughs> to see how long it'll take to actually flood the the bunker. Well, it would probably take longer than it would for them to call a plumber and have him fix it. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, here's the thing: we 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 burst the pipe right after in the morning right after everyone leaves how long would it take for that bunker to flood and for people to notice if we take an axe to the water mains which i think is more or less what we're thinking about yes uh it's going to take more than a plumber to fix um because you know there'll be this great body of water gushing out of a ragged hole or two. They'll notice pretty quickly, however, because when the water main's broken, nobody upstairs gets any water. That's true. Why don't also, we do it just we, before the performance? We don't we also That's don't need too close. We got to we need it to, to flood. I I think we don't need, need more than a foot or two of water to prevent them from using the bunker. Yeah, it'll sink we can't into use all it like if the water is spraying out of the audience. I, all my my concern is just let's do it before the play, like not like right before the play, but maybe in the morning. I wish we could just take out the damn performers. I mean, you're welcome to try, but I don't think that's the safest decision. Well, let's call it uh, Plan A, and then. You have plan B with a flood and uh Yeah, and plan Z can always be we walk into a bunker yes. with stand guns and kill everybody. Yeah. So let's say we were to uh get a quantity of laudanum and a hypodermic needle and inject the laudanum into six bottles of champagne. And say that it's either I mean, we could do the compliments of the house yes. compliments of the house bellhop thing or we could say please have these delivered to the wedding party uh on the behalf of whomever we say and the hotel actual staff whom they might recognize can deliver the champagne to them i think all these ideas are good maybe we should just pursue every one of them and just have all these backups <laughs> The They're idea not going to know what hit him. <laughs> the idea of sending them some soporific or poisonous champagne, again, anything that we can do well before the event is appealing to me, because then we have time to see whether it's successful or not. Perhaps they're all very abstemious and they're only consuming each other's urine up there or something, or just sunflower seeds, or who knows. It would only but, take one or two of them, but... Uh... And, that's, and it's going to put them on high alert. I mean, they are on high alert. They know that Graves' house just blew up. They don't think that's a coincidence. It's public knowledge. 
if they're reading the newspapers, perhaps they're just reciting the play over and over again. Perhaps they're not eating at all or drinking. Also, if they are reciting the play over and over again, they might have turned the top floors into the same, there, you know, there the might be up, There might be a weakness in reality up there, yes. Although I'm sure that hotel staff is, you know, they have to turn the sheets and whatnot. Maybe. I mean, hotel Bring. staff might just be disappearing up there. Well, I when we saw the hotel manager, he didn't seem to be panicked about vanishing That's staff. That's true. So, um, do we think that N will give us advice on any of these, or should we just... Forge? I think he wants us to figure it out ourselves. Yeah. So, are there other objections to poison champagne or merely soporific champagne? Uh, and certainly, N wouldn't object to that because you're doing a targeted assassination. Um, you're running fairly minimal risk of collateral damage. So, yeah, that that would give the get you'd get the green light from him for that. Yes. All right. Um, so we can do the targeted poisoning, right? If it doesn't work. Should we just have people waiting outside the hotel room ready to just gun them down? I'm the one of the reasons I think room service might be effective is I'm not sure they're going anywhere. I don't imagine they're having lunch at Claridge marriages than going back to their hotel rooms. I think they're they took rooms early because they're on site intentionally. Yeah, also although these days... yeah, go ahead. You know taking an opportunity to pick them off one by one should they leave is a fairly low risk action you sit in a parked car we only know what one of them looks like though right or a couple of them we have we know of a couple of performers so we might have pictures of a few of the lead cast you can assume the people on the top floor are the ones so posting somebody up there would be more effective than trying to notice them when they come out onto the street. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And well, how many point, uh, stairwells are there? Oops, we lost you, Matthew. Oh, you can't can you hear me? There you, there you are. Oh, okay. Probably me, just me being talking quietly. We'll have a person stationed at the stairwell or the uh, elevator if they have one. And then we block off all points of going down and therefore no one gets out because they can't like get past us um hopefully and that ensures that there will be no one around to redo the play 30 years later or something mm. right this is not looking too good for you on the second floor um i can see on the map one, two, three major stairwells. There are one, two, three other stairs marked, but they seem to be just straight lines. I think this is where the floor is on slightly more than one level, so it's just steps going up to another flat, uh, flat part of the corridor. So, yeah, three major stairwells and three sets of elevators as well. Oh, my mm. God. Yeah. Admittedly, one of those looks like it's a service elevator uh, because it's smaller than the other two. So you've got four, you've got two pairs of two, which are the elevators that go up to the top floor. They're almost across the uh, across the corridor from each other. So you've got two, and then if you went down the corridor slightly, you then get the other two. And then the service elevator is around the corner from there, uh, also along one of those, say, raised part of the staircase, near to one of the other stairwells. Did they so, rent out multiple rooms or just like a suite? Uh, there are two major suites up on the second floor, the Mayfair suite and the Chelsea suite. Uh, but they are not the only rooms up there. Um, so that wing of the hotel, that's the one that the pretty much all the wedding party would have taken out that part of the uh, okay. that part of the building. Then we can tighten the stranglehold and just cover those two wings. And that eliminates the need for the stairwell. The, to cover the stairwell 
Yeah, well, th- those stairwells as well, they are on, one's oh. on the eastern side, one's on the northern side, and the other one is on the on the face, the frontage that looks over Regent Street. So there are no direct stairwells that go up to where those suites are. But there is like, there's a, is there only a single door into each suite? There's a pair of doors by the elevators. So as you come out of the elevator, if you turn towards the west and continue down that corridor, yeah. before you get to the service elevator, there is a door which then bars you at the entrance into where the suites begin. So that would be a great funnel point. That if yeah, you so we'll just stop them there. We'll just hold the doors then. Hmm. So no one can go past us. If there's only one set of double doors out into the hallway. Yeah, in fact, there's there is one that's on the on the other side of the corridor, which kind of one goes around one way, one goes around the other, but both of those doors are right next to each other. Yeah. So yeah, there's no way out via apart from if you go to the elevators. There's there's physically no other way to get around it. Okay, then we will set up a final point there, in case the poisoning doesn't work. Yeah, we should get silencers as well for our machine guns, if possible. Mm-hmm. They're not that and silent. The the way we can hold the doors is, it, this is brutal. But like two people with machine guns, one keeps firing until they run out, and then while they reload, the other guy covers for them. Yeah, I mean these people are like limp wristed thespians. They're not going to put up much of a fight. I don't know about that. They uh they stab Davidge pretty good. Yeah, that's true. Well. I- why don't you just go up there, knock on the door, and when they open the door, brrr, everybody, and then walk away? I mean, we could do that. But I mean, we do get a few of them. I think that's more an 11th hour approach again. That's the last minute when all else fails, sort of thing. You could wait outside their door until they come down for the thing, and then just brrr. Let's try it. Let's try just scoping it out as room service first. Yeah, I think so. I'll uh, yeah. I'll order some tarts and puddings so we can bring up there. Yes, uh, I'll um, get some. What do you think? Champagne and strychnine is the way to go. Oh, um, that's a little more or... serious than laudanum. <laughs> well, yes, yeah, so they're not they're not going to sleep through Wednesday night if we just do laudanum. Sure. True. Strychnine, to... arsenic. Yeah, one or the other. Arsenic might smell. I don't know what strychnine smells. Arsenic mm. smells like almonds. Cyanide smells like almonds. Oh, that's right. Cyanide smells like mm. almonds. Uh, but arsenic and strychnine are very easy to get a hold of. Everybody uses them for rats. Rats. And stuff. Right. Um, Who shall we say the a complimentary champagne is from oh, the hotel. Um, but are we going to have a hotel staff deliver it though? I thought we might just say we're going to be in bellhop uniforms, right? Because we need to. Well, we're not poisoning them. We just need to scope it out first. Yes, I thought those were two different operations. Uh, One was no. bellhops and scooping out. I thought we would just drop off a crate of champagne that's and say. We'll just say compliments of John and Margaret. You know, please deliver. The hotel, I'm sure, offers that service. Wait, what? Wasn't wasn't this in the news, the wedding party? It was, yeah. Compliments of the newspaper. Because That's... they want they want the scoop on the story when it when it occurs. That would make sense. Yeah, I like that green. Very good. Also, in terms of poison, I wonder if I could get a hold of like some horrible fish poison in the fish market. We you want really them like to Google. drink the champagne. We don't want them to open the champagne, smell it, and pour it down the toilets. True, true. The toilets that aren't going to work. <laughs> well, we could, we could, yeah, there's a lot right. of uh, and, here. <laughs> and, and, da- and Melvin is correct. We can't remove the champagne from the champagne bottle without taking all of the stuff off of it. So we'll, uh, you, I bet you could get a syringe through it. Through we the, can get a syringe through it and have it not be noticed. I hope, 
I hope you don't put the syringe through it, and then the whole thing goes shoots yeah. all of the liquid out the syringe hole. Yeah, maybe not champagne then. Wine, wine would work because well, wine I, does. Well, you know, it might go flat a bit faster, but it, you know, the, a cork is uh, you know That's it self true. seals. That's so. true. Well, it'd be a bit of trouble. Can inject into a bottle of champagne, and I'll, I'll say that that works. If someone comments in, uh, puts in the comments that that doesn't work and the laws of physics say X, Y, and Z, it does in this reality. Okay. <laughs> the universe of self sealing corks. Mm -hmm. That works. Okay, so we'll scope the place out first without any mal ill intent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so who is going to do the scouting? And are you uh, dressing up as bellhops before? you get in the building or are you waiting until you get inside and then kind of finding a yeah we're waiting until we get corridor. inside yeah you don't want to walk through the front door they'll immediately know that you're not employees <laughs> okay so who is going up with uniforms to change later yes, we are on we are on the we've the got rooms line. so yeah, yeah you can go into our rooms change and then Sounds good. Uh, how yeah. easy would it be to get a uh, push cart? They're probably here and there throughout. The, we can grab one. And we'll or grab one and can, pull for You it. can just order room service to your own room and they will leave it yeah. in there and then you just borrow that. So. I'll order. Okay, I'll order yeah, we'll service. borrow it up. We'll, we'll dress up the desserts that we're going to give them. Mm -hmm. We should take a uh, chicken raw chicken, let it sit out for a while and then sprinkle it all over the, the desserts to give them give salmonella. Them salmonella. <laughs> they'll, they'll get the shits. Yeah, we're not going to do anything suspicious. Just just look. People get food poisoning all the time. <laughs> uh, I'm not even going to uh, bring a gun because that's the most suspicious thing you could even Okay, so you're going from the first floor uh, you've got those choice of elevators. They will then take you up in the got the main part, the more I'll say public, but it's not that's not the right word. The more guest uh, focusing part of the hotel, or do you want to try and go up the service elevator? Do the service elevators look like you need some kind of key? Uh, not so much. It's mainly just getting to them. That seems to be the the real difference uh the yeah there is one on the first floor so you can get you could get access to the service elevator you'd basically just have to find a time when there's no members of staff using it so mechanically it would be a stealth role to be able to find the find the right time and be able to get in there i'll take it okay give me that role all five out of 60 extreme you wait around for no more than a few minutes. These these uh, members of staff, they are nice, they're prim and proper. They are not worried about the fact they cause any noise. You can listen to them round the corner and hear them going in and out. You just wait until the point where you can't hear anyone and then you, do, you dive into the elevator and you can go straight up. All right, you ready, John Pierre? Oh, I was born uh, ready. Drop it off. Uh, we're going to set up some plates. Give them some nice dessert. Get a good look around. That's it. Right. Uh, you head up the very short distance to the floor above. Uh, it opens up into a corridor that goes... There's a door off to your left, which is uh, shut. It's That looks like it's an exit down to a uh, one of the stairwells, but it looks like it's like a fire exit. So this would be the route that would take you directly down to the bomb shelter. You've then got the ex uh, then you've got a corridor that goes to your right. There's then another set of doors, but then uh, you can get through that. That's your bottleneck there. Nice. And from going right at that junction, you then have a long corridor with numerous doors that go off it to the left and the right. And at the end of the corridor, there's a T junction with again corridors going left and right from there. These are all interconnected rooms and bathrooms. Um, you can hear there's a couple of uh, wirelesses playing, so there is music playing. There, is, there are people moving around up here. It's not just people that are sat 
uh, sat in chairs waiting, reading copies of The King in Yellow and waiting for time to pass. Um, there does seem to be activity up here. So people are moving around. And if you are to wait around, you'll almost certainly see someone come out into the corridor or you can knock on what seem to be the doors to the main Mayfair and Chelsea suites. Well, no time left the present, Jean-Pierre. After you. I'll knock on the door. Okay. Yep. In which case, there's a pause inside and then a, uh, a female voice calls, yeah, yes, come in. Uh, okay, well, I will open the door. Okay. Room service. Is... Oh, uh, there's a couple of confused faces. There's some uh, some good looking folks here. There seems to be actually a, a common theme amongst all the people here is that they're, they're all fairly good looking. I mean, How these many? were people that had um, careers on stage and in, in the performing arts. So looking good was kind of a, a good asset to have. Um, particularly the, uh, the young lady who that's from a couple of you managed to remember the name Adri um, Adrian Jacobs and the role that she had in the uh, the theatre beforehand that uh, you rec you were able to put a name to her face uh, she comes over to the door say like opening up when you say room service um, she's quite looks quite pleasant but looks a little confused rather than hostile uh, sorry I don't think anyone here ordered room service have you got the right room yes Good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, these desserts are complimentary for the wedding party. Oh. Um, and she... I'll begin to set up plates. Okay, she's not quite confidently. You. Yeah, you, you walk into the main the main kind of sitting room here where the uh, of the main suite, and you can see various people in here. Uh, I would say there's Adrienne, there's uh, Mark Long, who I believe you'd identified previously. Uh, with his moustache, uh, slicked back hair, kind of almost looking like a bit like a Peter Lorre kind of figure. So he's maybe not so good looking, but at least definitely a character actor part. And sat quietly off in a porter's chair, looking out the not so much a window because there is no in the, this is an internal room. There's no windows here, but just looking out across the rest of the room itself is a more elderly man. He's in his, how old he was, 61. <clears throat> so early 60s. Yeah, looks like Graves. Yep. You, you can see he's got a book on his lap that he just very discreetly closes as you, uh, as you come in and kind of watches you quietly from a distance, doesn't engage, but just lets everyone else do the talking around you. And yeah, there's various other, what you presume are the troop, that come over and are quite enthusiastic about receiving receiving food. Could I roll psychology on him to see if he recognizes us? You certainly can. Uh, this will be versus uh, this will be versus his pal to see how much of a poker face he can maintain. Oh my lord! Uh, well. I don't exactly have enough luck to be concerned about having no luck, so I'll spend it down to a pass. I, I've got a hard, so you would need to get a hard to be able to, um, to be able to then oh. compare what your stats are. Well, that's fine because I it's only five more. <laughs> I only have ten psychology. Okay. Jesus. Right. Uh, if you want to burn it down that much, are you fairly sure that he's uh, he's twigged you? He's just he's a very he's a very cool customer. Damn. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna give Good Ale the look, like mm -hmm. Alright, well, I'm gonna finish up uh cutting the desserts, serving, and then after that I will just leave. Actually, uh there'll be a little bowl for like tips <laughs> before i b before i leave i'm just gonna look at mr graves and be like i'm i heard i read about your house in the newspaper that breaks his kind of poker face slightly sorry I have what 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 are you talking about 
in your house. Did you not hear? I will let your success ride. He hasn't heard. He, this is genuinely caught, uh, caught him as a curveball. Oh, well, must have been a German bomb. <sighs> he, he sighs. War is terrible. That's that's frustrating. War is hell. Thankfully, though, and he just gestures to the uh, to the room around him. All the most important people in the world are here for me, and I can't replace them. I can replace furniture, I can replace books, but I can't replace my dear friends. Well, I'm envious of your relationship. <laughs> Such a sweet, nice old man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Uh, at this point, I know that damage isn't there, but this is pretty much your plan as a group. Can I have a party luck roll, please? I might have oh, the most luck now. I have four. I have Fifty-one <laughs> luck. So I guess you're rolling the four. Yeah. Jesus. Go for it. May the may oh, the mom. dice gods be in your favor. Oh, twenty-nine. Okay. Close, but no cigar. Okay, yep, that's that's the conversation as it plays out for the minute. Okay, so when we were at the suite, you said the wedding party book two. Now we know which one, like which suite they're actually in, right? Yeah, there's, they seem to be, the majority of folks seem to be in the Chelsea suite. Okay. But you know that there is also the Mayfair suite, which is slightly down the corridor because it kind of d bisects the the wing. So you've got the Chelsea side on uh, the Chelsea suite on one side, the May the Mayfair suite on the other. So Chelsea seem... has graves. Yes. All right, that's what we need to know. Uh, does he drink? Does he have a drink next to him? He you know, certainly does not. He needs to stay focused when mm -hmm. preparing his rights. Okay. Very well. I don't think the the targeted poisoning of the champagne is gonna No, he's he's marked us the second we walked in there. Alright, well, let's get out of here. He he just watches you from the other side of the room. You do notice he does blink. <laughs> Well, the mysteries of that book didn't horrify him. Do right. If only we had. If only I thought to like put like a, a microphone in. That would be nice. I don't. I don't know if we have the technology right now. That would be a little bit more yeah. advanced than what they had. I just have to wait forty years. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> but you you pull back out of the room and head towards the the, ele the elevators again. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Uh, at that point, we'll cut the camera then down to, uh, to downstairs. Uh, as I understand, uh, Davidge would like to have a word with Dr. Gross. Yeah. I assume that we're in our room together. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm thumbing through the book, the, uh, the Elphilus. True magic. Uh, true magic. Uh, Dr. Gross, you see this this passage here about the creation of a magical knife. I mentioned yes. it before, and Captain Captain Oswald uh, Goodsdale thought that it might make an interesting weapon. It suddenly dawns on me. I mean, it's obvious that Graves, if he was the owner of the book, has been constantly turning to this particular page, this Indeed. knife. It's not just a weapon. It's some sort of storage device. It stores magical energy. There have been murders. Yes, Could indeed. he be using the knife, the knife to murder people in order to store magical energy, energy. 
And because it they up. don't have enough magical energy to pull this spell off all by themselves. How many yes. murders have there been so far? Um, I cannot remember off the top of my head. Uh, Please. Well, there was the man in the in the, two, in three, the beginning. Two or three. Have there been two or three murders so far? There was the caretaker who was murdered on King's Cross Station platform. Then there was the landlady who uh, was uh, right. the landlady for his building. There was the attempted murder of you, but obviously that failed. That was just attempted. Right. Those are the only... Uh, you also technically killed, stroke, murdered the cultist who attacked you. But in terms right, of but... The, the murders that the cult have performed, they've only killed two people. They've killed two people, and with magical runes, as it were, carved into their body, probably by this yes. magical knife. Uh, so if we can find that knife, we could probably stop them from being able to have enough energy to do the whatever they're doing. Yes, that would make sense. Um... Uh, that whatever uh, what they are planning requires a lot of energy, so to make sense to steal that magical energy. So, and I'm sure if we researched it further, we probably might find that over the the course of time they have murdered more people because they did summon a servitor and they've done other things with magic. Yes, I wonder if. I wonder if Jean and Oswald may have noticed a knife when they peeked in upstairs. Uh, we'll see. I it think I hear them coming down the stairs. Yes. Speaking of hearing, uh, this will determine whether I get one bonus die or not. Uh, Captain Oswald and Jean-Pierre, can I have listen rolls from you as you get to the, ele the elevator? Sure. Uh, I got a pass. No. No, nope, nothing from John Pierre. Okay, Captain, just as the doors are starting to close, you think you hear a male voice. You think it's probably Graves because you heard uh, you heard him talking. Um, not quite yelling, but very forcefully ordering people places now, now. What do you do? Oh, fuck. All right. Jean, I got to get the rest of them. Do you want to figure out what's going on? It sounds like something's happening right now. Yep. Do we I'll have a... In the hotel room. Do we have a kitchen knife? Um, yeah, um, like we have the cake cutting knife. Yeah, I'll take the cake cutting knife and be like, I will be waiting here for you. All right. Don't do anything rash. Bring the Sten guns. Okay. <laughs> right. So, Jean-Pierre is waiting here. The captain's I will going be... downstairs to, fit the other, uh, to get the others. Hmm? Yeah, I'll be listening at the door. Just I'm case. still at the push cart. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Um, we'll say by this point, Melvin is arriving back at the... Uh, apartments you've got on the floor but the floor below so you're on the first floor you you have got your uh crate full of bubbly which may or may or may not lessen the impact of what's about to come you never know right uh jean pierre you haven't read the king in yellow have you nope no. i'm untouched good point but you are listening you're not watching what's uh what's about to happen yeah right um it seems like they start to do some kind of rehearsal because it definitely sounds like some theatrical performance where you think the lady who was uh, that just greeted you at the door is uh, uttering about, oh, this dro uh, dreary, unending siege and starts to go on a very melodramatic monologue. Uh, meanwhile, underneath that, you think you can hear what sounds almost like some kind of chanting that's happening, but only one voice that's doing so. 
Uh, you have deprived me of one bonus die for me having to try and perform this early, but you have forced his hand to cast a particular spell. So let's see what happens. He's forcing our hand early now. <laughs> We're going to bring out the machine guns. Holy uh, shit. I... You left the guns downstairs. <laughs> it was always going to come to this. Let's be honest. Uh, there, there are ways of uh, there are ways of circumventing it because one time, uh, as as an aside of here's what you could have won, I do remember one particular group just going in there and shooting him in the face, which has other consequences. But uh, right of the 73, 73, 43, or thirteen, I will go with thirteen. <clears throat> uh, this happens for everyone from where uh, from where you are. So for Jean Pierre for the, the captain as you're just coming out of the elevator and for the three of you in the apartment downstairs, all the lights go out. This was well, middle, middle of the afternoon. There were no lights on, but now there is just pitch black. What do you do? Oh. No Everything light coming through the window? Yeah. Nope. In fact, you, you turn around, you are just in, in complete and utter darkness. Have I gotten back to the hotel room? Uh, you've just stepped out the elevator as far as you're concerned. Right, I'm and then, running. And then everything's gone, yeah, everything's I'm running. gone black. Okay, uh, give me a... I'm probably going to say luck roll for this. All right, I'll give you a luck roll. 50-50, and we're on the right side of luck. 37 out of 51. Okay, you start running... And you catch the sound of your footfalls echoing around the room. This isn't a corridor you're in. This is a much bigger room. That you you suddenly basically you get a few steps and go. Hang on a minute. This doesn't sound right. You're you're fairly sure you're not where you're supposed to be. You're not on. You're not having just come out of an elevator behind you. That you're getting the impression that you're in a much bigger room. I look behind me. Is the elevator still there? It's pitch black. Yeah. All right, I'm going to call out for Davidge, Melvin. Uh yes, Davidge, George and Melvin, you can all hear the captain. Does he sound close or far away? Uh a, a seemingly across a very large room. Uh, oh. Get all the equipment. Uh, He's started. Graves has started. Shit. Uh, we don't can't find anything. We're apparently not in the room any longer. I flick open a, a match and uh, a lighter. Okay, you uh you flick on and it illuminates a little bit around you, which Davidge, George, and Melvin, you can see this light go off in off in the distance. You're from what you can tell, in a relatively high ceiling room, you're catching um, oak paneling around on one on one side of you. There are pillars. There's a wall off to um, off to your right hand side, but then there's just a big open floor that you can um, you can all look as you're seeing you're least seeing bits of this. You can give me idea rolls. I'm pretty sure we're back in time. You <laughs> Uh, you say that there is oak paneling. Yes. Yeah. Um, is there like a fireplace? Not a hard... in this room. No. Okay. I have a, a regular Probably. only. I think we're backstage fifty years ago. I think so as well. You're, you're almost. You're in the minor hall on the ground floor. So you are two rooms away from the the bottom of the orchestra pit. But you are on the lower level of what was the St. James's Theatre. Okay, that's a sand roll for sure. Yep, you think you can give me a, a roll for that? I am resolute. I know what needs to be done. I failed my sand roll. Oh, I made mine, surprisingly. Um, pass is going to be zero. I'm going to say failure is just one point. We need okay. to act. I think he's teleported us back in time yes yes no no time I, to, to debate we need to act they're yes, starting I, the play what do you suggest you didn't go armed 
That's right. We don't I didn't have get anything. I have I have a crate of champagne. I don't think that's going to stop the play. He's got a, a lighter. That's fire, and I might be able to magnify it somehow. Oh boy. We may that's be the really cause. Of the, we may be the cause of the building burning down. Does it smell like gas at all? Can't smell any gas. Well, let's not repeat history here. It just goes badly. It's just going to end badly for us. If it doesn't burn, then the play goes on and it all happens now. Unless we would do something different. We focus down graves. We take him out of the equation. Well, let's just go kill him. Yes. Uh, yes. Let's see if we Champagne can find our way out of this smash area. It, right now you have a deadly weapon, Melvin. Speaking of repeating, but it's history, expensive champagne. I don't think that matters. <laughs> Speaking of repeating history, uh, Jean Pierre, you're upstairs. All the lights go out. What do you All do? alone. Well, you got well, his cake cutting you th- knife. You think you are? Give me a listen roll. Okay. Let's see if so, those dinner. knife skills go to work. Uh. No, that's another fail. Okay. Um, you think you hear voices coming down the your well. Given if you were to reach out and touch stuff around you, you can work out you're actually in a corridor rather than being in a big open space like the others downstairs. But you think you hear voices coming off to your right? Maybe. Then I will follow the voices as best I can being careful, and without turning on any lights, I'll just try to feel my way around without making any noise. Gotcha. Uh, Okay, give me a luck roll. Well, I don't think that's going to work out well. Oh, 15, but that's still... Close! Right, let's see if I shoot you or not. Right, let's... uh... (laughs) Uh, A bullet rushes past your head. Uh, like small cap, small caliber handgun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hey, and they can oh. see you in the dark, huh? Um, as as the bullet rushes past you, you can see that there's suddenly a light gets turned on from uh, from down the corridor, and a figure. It takes you a couple of seconds to be able to piece him together because you saw you've seen him as a much older man, but. When this uh, when this light comes on, Franklin is there as he was decades ago, uh, guarding the ga- guarding the door to what you think would be the main auditorium where the play is being performed. As he said, he was there, st- stood ready with a gun to kill anyone that came out. He's taken a pot shot as he's heard you coming down uh, coming uh, down the corridor, and now he's turned the light on to see if uh, see if he can see anyone there, and he's. Uh, trying to quickly aim, uh, get his aim properly on whoever is is coming towards him. What are you doing? I'm just, yeah, I'm just going to be like friendly. I'm on your side, you asshole. Yeah, tell him. I'm not you're with them. Stop. You're gonna have to give me a pretty damn good persuade roll for that. <laughs> um. Well, that's probably also not going to work out well. Uh. Yeah. No. My persuade is ten. Yeah. No. Okay. Well, um, you can tell he's not buying it, and you can tell that he's not a trained combatant. He is shaking, but he's pulling back the hammer on the gun. You know what? How far away do I think he is? You, you're within charging distance of him. Yeah, I'm charging him. This guy, come on, this guy, he hasn't been through Verdun. He doesn't know shit. All right. Uh, give me a opposed dex roll. See if you can uh, basically get to him before he summons up the will to shoot again. All right. Um, dex, I just got a regular. Okay. <laughs> I failed by one. So your regular success rolls. <laughs> right? Um, yeah, and I, you're just... mm-hmm. I'm just going to like grab his arm so he can't shoot me and just be like, I told you I'm friendly, you son of a bitch. Okay. Um, you've got more than strength forty, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he's not exactly a uh, not exactly the world's strongest man, so you can restrain him without any uh, any difficulty. Which, what, 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 what what do you mean you're not? Are you, are you... 
I'm from the future. <laughs> That's the first thing you have to know. The look of I'm staring at a crazy man crosses over his face. Look, your mission tonight, I know all the details. It's going to fail. We've come back from the future to assist you. What are you talking about? I know the plan. You have the gas. The girl with the gas, she dies. She lights it off too early. He, he looks at you stunned. What? I know everything. I know your cop friend died. I know your other friend. What you I met you in the future. I... My, my, the gas must be getting to me and causing me to see things. That's, that's the only way it can be. You don't believe me, and yet you know what's going on here. You know this badness. I know this, this... The people in the next room have to be stopped. Mm -hmm. We're on the same side. Just... You can pretend I'm a hallucination if you want. But you might have just blown our cover completely by shooting. You haven't heard any response seemingly from the uh, from that great hall. But yeah, you can see uh, Franklin definitely stops uh, stops resisting your grasp. Hmm. Do you have any more guns? He just gestures with his hand towards the one he's holding. I'm, I'm just going to take his gun. <laughs> yeah. And I'll, I'll give him my knife. Okay, he, he looks at that he looks like even more warily than the gun. Uh, a bit too uh, close and personal for, for my... Uh... Oh. Do, you, do, you, do you know how to use that thing? You could pull the handle back and... I was in the military. Oh. Yeah, he's, he's just a bit stunned. Um, you guys downstairs, give me a listen roll to see if you hear the gunshot. I don't know how I couldn't have heard it, but I didn't hear it. <laughs> I'm trained in the law. I don't listen. 92. Uh, in which case, none of you heard it. So, okay, that, that at least is in keeping with the if... fact that it's very thick flooring. And a hell of a long way from where you are. So, yeah, you continue as you were. <laughs> Do you think if he could send us back in time, they could travel back in time as well? Maybe the whole idea is for them to finish the play that was started. Maybe. To... I'm, I'm looking for a weapon. <laughs> We gotta kill whoever's involved in this. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we need to get there now. Uh, we have to figure out which way to go. I guess the, if that's the oak, we want to. It must be a door. Yep. From where you are, uh, you're in the minor hall, or one of the two minor halls. You're actually on the one that's on the western side of the, uh, the eastern side of the building. Uh, there are doo, doo, doo. one, two, three main exits going out of here. Uh, one of which would take you towards the lower restaurants, which would be the, like I say, the dining area. There's another one that would then take you out to the exit that goes towards Piccadilly. And then there's the exit that would take you closer to the lobby, which is also where the stairs are, which would then go up to the floor above you. That would also be the exit that would take you out onto Vine Street and to Regent Street. You want to get into the theater, correct? Is that what we're we trying want to, to get? To? If we want to stop the play, yes. So the shortest route to the theater. Right. There are two different routes you can take. There's going through the lobby and going through the stairs that would then take you upstairs to the um, to the corridor that leads to the entrance to the Great Hall itself, which is the most direct route to get into the um, into the Great Hall. 
then there's the sudden little maybe not spark that's the wrong word to use but that little light bulb of uh, inspiration and memory that goes off that you remember that the uh, the young lady that blew herself up uh, the first time this went uh, went through uh, constant she was in the pit underneath the orchestra which is also on the ground floor so you could go through uh, go to the other end of the building and then go up that way which would then bring you up behind this, the, the kind of the backstage area so that is that is another route if you wanted a more covert entrance that would be the one to take yeah a more covert we don't Let's know do that exactly where they are in the performance but i suppose they must have had to begin at the beginning so we have until the second act you think should only take us a few moments to get up there why is there no light there's no need for it down here there's nobody down here why why burn lights would they all have to be gas lights at this point in time also remember this is the this is the night before the building was due to be demolished anyway. Yeah, so the gas is probably well it's probably not turned off but there well, it, it can't be if Constance blew it up, right? It's basically an abandoned building. Remember they broke in to perform to do the performance or covertly do the performance. So I we don't want know what we're going. We want to stop the young woman from blowing the building up because I don't want to be blown up. We want to go backstage and surprise them from behind and get graves. Is there any better weapon we can come up with than a broken champagne bottle? Well, if you don't have anything else, the broken champagne bottle will do. I'll I'll take a switchblade out. I actually forget too that I have. Uh, so yeah, I, uh, I also doubt may, there's going to be guns around here, you know. Bash there brave, may be, graves in the head. There may be a fire axe in the stairwell if we're lucky. If we're uh, lucky, yeah. We'll yes, I love those words, especially when you got fourteen luck in your little group. Yeah, <laughs> I'm the one looking for the axe. I'll break a champagne bottle to start with, so it is not to be empty-handed. And then, uh, can bottle. we? <laughs> Do, do we know which door is which? Yes, you know what you know. You know your you know the layout well enough to navigate to where you want to get to because you've you've had the plans. You've looked over the blueprints before. I wonder if it's a valid uh, thing to do in one of these uh, uh, games for the guy with fourteen luck to simply leave the building so he's not involved in any luck. <laughs> Do you, do you, want, you want to leave? You want to leave this building yet? No. I mean, uh... I, I'm willing to die for. <laughs> oh, that 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 may maybe suddenly gets you thinking that, yeah, what is outside? Is this that you have been transported back to uh, back in time, or Are we is in there a something bubble? else out there? Yeah, I mean, I who would... knows? We we got to move. They're doing the play right now. We can't yeah. let them finish. So we got to stop the woman from blowing the place up, right? And then we have to take care of Graves. Well, we should split up at least to get those two things done. Well, they're the same direction. Yeah, I'll head. We'll stick yeah, together I'll... until then. All right, let's go. Safer in a group. Right, so you're name? going. Which uh, which specific route are you going? The one that brings us up in backstage. Right, you're going that way. Right. Uh, give me a, a opposed dex roll. So, who has the who has the lowest dex in the group? I've got the. I probably have lowest. I'm forty five. It's lower than me. Yeah. Time to meet your old friend Constance Bennett again. Uh, twenty four out of forty five. Uh, I will spend down to a heart if needed. And oh, Parker. I rolled fifteen, which is a hard. It's it's like three points off an extreme for me. Okay, so shall I spend down to a hard to meet to match, or do I need to surpass? I, uh, if you go down to meet, it would then be comparing the stat, and I've got a dex of sixty. Okay, then so be it. I'm going to spend points to get that down to a nine, so that's uh, fifteen luck. Okay. 
to beat right? it. In which case, then you, uh, what happens is your group arrives uh, in the orchestra pit, having gone through the couple of uh, couple of doors down a corridor, and then through, and it kind of the back stairwell to then get into the understage, the under pit underneath the orchestra. And you arrive to find there are a couple, there's light down here, there's a couple of lamps that have been set up, but you hear this sickening sound of someone it sounds like they're gasping and then they're gurgling but there's a wet gurgle in the process um the hell yeah when when you enter into the scene you find uh this is where you uh, suddenly hear hear a the sound of gas uh slightly seeping out of only a partially open valve um, but you can see this figure that um, Oswald has seen before, anyway. Uh, uh, talking to him, yeah, talking to him in the uh, the tube tunnel. Uh, that is almost lent and bent, arched backwards over a uh, over a crate. That she is contorted and twisted in completely unnatural in an unnatural angle. Graves stood over her with one hand up like this, uh, like clenching towards some kind of gripping part something invisible in front of him as with the other hand he has brought down this curved jagged blade directly into um into her chest is he, he maybe not paying attention lump. to us oh he is most he is a trying to almost doing a dual action he's casting a spell and then stabbing the woman at the same time okay so he I is very much distracted then. yeah i got the switchblade i'm going to go up behind him Okay. It's the knife. Uh, we'll, yeah. We'll go into we'll go into dex order then. So uh, first of all, give me a stealth roll to see if you can uh, do it without getting his attention. Absolutely. O five. I I will give him penal a penalty, but that seems irrelevant when you roll O five. Yeah. Uh, to see if he does get a chance of noticing you. And uh, his spot hidden is sixty five. And seventy-eight or forty-eight? No, seventy-eight's a fail. So, um, yep, you get the drop on him. Holy shit! <laughs> All right, I'm gonna sneak up behind him, and uh, do I grab the knife or do I open his throat? I think, I think I'm just gonna open his throat up. With the switchblade, like wrench his head back and just switchblade into the throat. Okay. Um, I won't apply any difficulty on this. So also, he doesn't get a chance to fight back as you've got the drop on him. Uh, give me a fighting brawl roll with a bonus die. Oh, please, please entail. <laughs> uh, forty-nine or nineteen. Uh, I will spend eight points to make that an extreme to get the impale on his throat. Okay. So a switchblade is 1d4 plus the damage d4 bonus? plus damage bonus, that's correct. So I think that's just 8 damage. Uh, no, sorry, it's... It's the 8 plus the d4 yeah, that you then roll. Plus damage bonus. So you, you, dip the, you get the damage bonus once because you don't roll. It's the you weapon it. die that you roll again. All right. So you've done 8 as max. And All then... 4 and then 2. So uh, 8 plus 4 plus 2, which is 14. Oops. I, you killed him by an extra four percent. Uh, Jesus, by an extra four points. Uh, you slice into him. There is this same gurgling God. as what's coming out of Constance as he's uh, used this blade and pierced through her lung and out the other side of her back. This uh, gleeful look of "I finally got you after all these years," and then just another grin, but red goes across his neck. Uh, there's spray that goes out across her, that goes out across the floor, splatters the light in here, so it becomes a very deep crimson shade that now bathes the scene even more uh, gore. And he starts to collapse to the floor, uh, trying to stem the bleeding, but he's dead before he even hits, before he hits properly. The, uh, his, the rest of his torso hits the deck. I'll kick the knife away from his hands then. I'll pick up the knife. Okay, yeah, it's. It's kind of lodged in Constance, so oh. it's more like kicking her away. Is she still um, alive then? Or I, I she, she got hit with rack and then got a, and then got a sacrifice then got a sacrificial a enchanted sacrificial dagger to the chest. 
So no, she she is also very much dead. When uh, by the time if uh, Davidge goes over and pulls the blade out, you you in one last gasp and gurgle through the open wound and our blood pouring out from her mouth and she is gone. She I'd, I'd like to get the, to the gas and turn it off, but I might have to take a sand check for all of this mayhem before that. Yeah, you're you're not too accustomed to uh to death, uh, Captain I'm Oswald. It's, it's just another Tuesday for you. Yeah. Jesus. It was the fact that I could see his spinal column through the cut that made me, gave me pause. But I rolled a 27, so the bastard deserved it. So, yeah, I was going to say, some people had it coming. I, so, I think now yeah. that the gas is off, we can disrupt the play by throwing these lit lanterns onto the stage. And it won't detonate all of us. It'll just set Order. fire to the stage and prevent Do we want to get the audience out first? Is there an out for them to go to? Can we hear yell fire. The audience. Yeah, yeah, we can yell fire. Um, but then that means we won't be able to clean up the uh, the actors. You know, Davidge has an enchanted blade. We can start picking them off. I, maybe we I, just say this is an issue for another thirty years. Well, hope, uh, I'm hoping that we snap back. It. We snap well, back to the future, but we end up. Graves is magic. Uh, Graves can't be casting a spell right now from that pile, but we're here. Let's let's um, dispatch the players one by one. Okay. All right. And if the audience doesn't run away from a group of strangers in odd garb murdering the cast, maybe they're just trapped here. I don't know. Is there anything else on uh, Graves' body? Uh, there's the copy of the book that you had, which is, unsurprisingly, The King in Yellow. I'm taking it. Don't nice look into memento. it. I won't. Well, you can't read French probably anyway, but don't give it to the fishmonger. Yeah. Uh, this, this is in English. Oh, so this, this man, I want that French his, copy. This, this is one of his copies <laughs> that he's made. Uh, well, not anymore. <laughs> So well, then give it does to he the fish else He can't him? read it. <laughs> Besides, I'm the sorry. Book. Anything well, useful? Speaks, uh, there's nothing else that seems to be. Uh, that seems to be really on him. Okay. Um, there's nothing else he needed besides the besides the knife and uh, the book. All right. Well, if we we know what has to be done. We'll head upstairs then, right? Or head onto the stage. Yeah. Okay, so you see the uh, there's a wooden st- there's a wooden ladder that goes up to a trap door. Uh, the trap door is closed at this point. So back out to the other end and uh, well, literally the far end of the great hall by the main door. Uh, Jean Pierre and Franklin. Yeah, I I think I'm going to just plug my ears with anything that I can, and suggest Franklin does the same. And then if there's any like um, catwalk above the stage. There almost certainly would be. Uh, you know, this is this, it's a theater, so they would have to have that kind of rigging so that they yeah. can uh, perform things like the, the, the various uh, backing changes or any kind of uh, changes on the stage, dropping the curtains, etc. So you wouldn't be able to get to that from this end of the building, but if you were to go back down the corridor that you came up, um, you would pass the entrance that takes you out to Piccadilly Street, and if you went right down to the end, there is a stairway that goes up, which would then get you into the uh, get you up into the rafters behind the stage. Yeah, I'll go for that. Okay. So are you assuming outside right? exists. Well, the outside is if you go. That would be if you go out onto Piccadilly. But this is just carrying straight down the uh, straight down the corridor. Are you leaving Franklin by the door, or are you taking him with you? Hmm. I'll leave him. Okay. So he he says I'll I'll keep an I'll. I'll do what I was supposed to do. I'll guard the door, and if anyone comes out, I'll give him. I was going to say give him, uh, give him hell with my gun, but he now holds up the knife you've given him. I'll wave this at them and hope it's covered in icing. Just, <laughs> just do your best. 
it, it tastes good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he tries to summon up some courage, but he's you can definitely tell he's kind of wobbly at the knees. Right, you start heading down towards uh, down towards the back. Uh, you can easily get up the staircase that will then give you access to the rafters. This this is not guarded. They're not expecting anyone anyone to come up from this uh, from this angle. So, do you press on to go up uh, and up and out onto the top of the stage? Yeah. Right. This this will resolve pretty much at the same time then that uh, Davidge, Gross, Melvin, and the captain are coming up from below. So, dice roll time as soon as I find it. There we go. Right, can I have a pal roll as you eat as each of you emerges on at least into the backstage area? Oh no. Nah. Uh, that is an extreme. Well, we're good. I uh, have failed by ten, and I think I'd like to spend that. Ten luck sounds a good choice at this point. Oh, oh, free. I'll do. George is also good. Yeah. How's the captain doing? Oh, captain's good. Success, and Jean Pierre. Um, I got a 17, and also I have my ears plugged. Okay. Right. In which case, then, with, with everyone succeeding, this, this is a good thing for you, um, as you emerge from the, your different vantage points, for a moment, it looks like a very ramshackle stage that's been set up. You can see a painted backdrop that's this painted canvas that's fallen, basically forming where the back curtain would be, that looks like it's very shoddily um, trying to depict a balcony and then waves of some kind of lake or ocean or body of water beyond it. And that there's the very old, decrepit stage, uh, scuffed and beaten up, so curtains that are pulled back on either side where you can see there are actors which are waiting in in the literal wings waiting for their to, uh, their time to walk on and do their various uh, performing parts lots of them are dressed in what would appear to be some kind of uh, renaissance palace uniform or guard uh, guard uniform some that are dressed more regally and one that's dressed in yellow with this tabard over the front of them and wears uh, wears a porcelain mask so very much the depiction of the stranger or the phantom of truth. But that impression lasts for all of two or three seconds. By the time you look back at that uh, that canvas as it comes down from the, uh, from the ceiling to the floor, that's not a canvas. That is a balcony that overlooks the Lake of Harley. You see this long body of water that extends off into the distance, made of these rolling cloud waves, this glorious but seemingly dead palace on the far side, on the far horizon, where these two towers rise with moon shining behind them, black stars coming down from the sky. And it seems completely and utterly real. But when you turn to look 90, uh, 90 degrees off to your left, you can see, not quite as if it's a break in reality, but as if there is a sudden stark change of contrast from this glorious regal atmosphere that surrounds you to yeah there's a theater over there and everyone's looking at you there is an enraptured audience that sits in these old almost condemned chairs um, just sat motionless some of them are open slacked mouth some of them are drooling others you can see their eyes have rolled back in their head some of them are mumbling Almost as if they're mumbling along to the lines of that being said by the various uh, by the actors that are on stage, but yeah, there's just this audience which is just staring on, watching you all, or watching whatever seems to be happening in this um, in this bubble, this this sudden this palace that has appeared from nowhere. 
And same from Jean Pierre, you're walking ac across onto the gantry that suddenly becomes a balcony and this m wonderful marble balustrade that looks down upon this, uh, what seems to be a part of a not quite a throne room but definitely looks like a maybe a ballroom beneath you that overlooks that overlooks this grand lake you can even feel the breeze coming off the water and let's say for for sake of ease the four of you as you're coming up you can see above you you can see this balcony where you can see jean pierre walking out into view is there anything like super heavy on the balcony that I could it's push onto the guys. It's Sandbags. made of marble, so there are there are uh, pillars oh. that hold up the balcony. Uh, hold up the. Um, I'm losing words. Um, the banister. So there are uh, there are these marble uh, marble pillars that come up from there. They'll take a bit of a kick, but you could kick them off, and they would definitely make a dent when uh, in someone if they landed on them. Okay. Oh. There's no one currently on stage performing. They're in, all in the wings. No, there's there's a hand, there's a few which are in the wings. There's about ten people in the wings, mm. but there's about three people which are on the stage. There's what, a figure that looks very much like a queen. Uh, there's a slightly mm -hmm. younger girl that looks maybe like a should be a daughter, perhaps. There's bear in mind they're actors. There's not going to get a great family resemblance between them. And talking to what appears to be some kind of high high priest figure, you get you have the word Noah Tulba, which gets mentioned once at least. I'll I'll run out onto the stage and yell, "Stop!" And if they don't stop, I'm stabbing Casilda in the back. With <laughs> oh, oh, and you run onto the stage, and the, at that point, as the there's the the reaction is gods. And you're you're about to get swarmed by folks from the uh, folks in the wings. So I'm going to um, try to drop a pillar on them if they try to come out. This sounds like we descend into dex order for for combat. Yeah, here we go. Point. Oh boy. So, oh, that's where I have to juggle quite a few people. I, I was going to ask though: is the the gateway into there is there an edge to it or is it just sort of blend into our reality it seems like the stage area itself is what's become transformed so if you were to leap off the stage you would be in the the kind of the body theater. of the audience part of the theater and if we were to kick them off the back of the stage they'd fall into carcosa or They'd fall, they'd fall into the Lake of Harley, so the uh, the lovely cloud waves of the lake. All right, uh, so this is going to be guards. They're not so uh, the king and queen, at least the queen and daughter and the high priest. They aren't going to be a uh, deaning themselves to get involved in fights. That's what you have guards for. Uh, we just so... have to disrupt the play. Mm -hmm. Okay, take you... out the actors that with speaking roles. <laughs> Well, he a magic did. knife in the back will do that. Brave said it himself. They're irreplaceable. Yeah, he did. All right. Uh, anyone beat Dex of 70? Uh, no. Yeah, I have 75. Okay. Is that with... I presume that's without your... That's uh, without the handgun. ...bonus for having a gun out? Yeah. Yes. So it's 125 with the gun. There we are. So the gun looks like it's going first because no one else is declaring range weaponry in this. Who's I was going to try to kick a pillar off onto the guards that were coming out. Then you wouldn't get the bonus yeah. with, the, with the gun. It's only so if that you fire would be it. Just, yeah, that would just be your base decks. Which is, which is 75. 75. Yeah. Okay. All right. You want to go for a guard? Yeah. Okay. Um, you can see that there are two which are moving particularly quicker than the others. Uh, they are pretty much all of them. There are five guards that you... Uh, one, two, three, four, five. There are six guards which are going to be rushing towards Davidge. Two of them look like they're going to get there before the other two. So you can definitely go for one of those two if you wish. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll just go for one. In terms of maybe more appealing targets, one of them looks slightly more beefier than the other. Yeah, I'll go for the beefy one. Okay. Right. Uh, give me a strength roll to see if you can get the get the pillar off. 
Yeah, I got 15. So that's a, uh, is that an extreme? I have 70 strength. Mm -hmm. uh, that'd be one off. Be oh, okay. Be a... I'll spend one. I have four. So now I have three luck. <laughs> I will count that as effectively being uh, good enough to make sure that you can make it as your attack roll as well, so you hit him. Um, I'm going to treat the falling rock, very big pillar falling rock. Uh, let's call that 2d6. Ooh. Wow. Seven total. Which is more than half of his hit points. So... <coughs> The knock them up. Six left. Uh, I have to make my con check versus sixty-five, and I roll fifty-two. Uh, he is conscious, but he has taken a beating. Uh, you can see the guy pretty much falls, uh, takes the uh, takes the hit to his shoulder, uh, yells, cries out loud as you fairly sure you hear something crack with a wound like that. Um, and he slumps down uh, pretty much one leg hitting the um, hitting the deck that will take him out for at least this round so only one is uh, one is going to be acting immediately against Davidge on 70 so anyone else on 70 or higher decks hey Davidge you've got this guy running towards you that's carrying what seems to be a, almost like a pole axe um looks like he's gonna uh, try to be running you through with it that's a real pole axe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it, it's a it looks like a pole axe, but this is this is stage weaponry. It's still sharp if you hit you with hit it yeah. in the right place. <laughs> so, a couple of questions: um, How is the theater lit? Is it gaslight? The the bit you're in looks like it's lit by braziers. So you can see this is like an old, um, not quite medieval, but it's definitely an old castle-ish type of environment. So there There's is no... fire present. Yes, there is. Yeah. Do I have one round before the guy with the full arm gets to me? It's where your dex becomes an issue rather than the round, because it's you, you will be acting in the same round, just further down the round. Because your kind of surprise action was to go in and uh, cry stop. Right. Okay. Well, I'm wondering if, given that I have this knife in my hand that might have extra magic in it, mm -hmm. I was going to do Cloak of Fire. Ooh, okay. Since I haven't used any of my fire spells so far in the game. And if there's fire present that's real fire, mm -hmm. then I can, I can cast the spell. But it takes right. one round. To activate it does yeah uh, if you are able to like survive the incoming attack you would be able to start cast you'd be able to cast it on your uh, on your on turn my, in the next order turn. okay can i dodge on this to avoid being hit and still cast on my yeah, turn you, you, can, you can certainly dodge yeah okay i will try to dodge as he runs forward Okay. All right. My fighting brawl. This would be the club. No. I didn't pass the dodge. <laughs> hey, I but... didn't pass my fight uh, my fight roll either. So yeah. uh, he lunges towards you and it's a comedy of errors of both of you can lean the wrong way, but lean both in the opposite direction to each other. So okay. it's almost like the goal uh, the goalie dive in the wrong way to try and catch the football as it comes towards them. So, right. Yeah. Um, there's no, nothing happens there. Ships in the night. So that was Dex 70. Uh, 65. Anyone there? Right. Dr. Gross. Um, he will actually... Uh, he, he's always had a handgun on him. It's one of the things that's always been with him. Yeah, yeah. So he's bringing it out. He doesn't really, he's better with rifles than handguns, but, you know, <laughs> is what it is. And Surely you're point blank. He's going to shoot someone. <laughs> I would shoot the actors. This is important. Who are your, uh, of, I've described several people that you can see around you. Who is your target? Mm. 
Who is directly around me, particularly? Like the, the the people that are important, because you've already said about having named actors being the important ones here. You've got Casilda, you've got Camilla, the daughter, you've got Noah Tolba, the high priest, and you've got the stranger, the guy that's uh, the Phantom of Truth that's off on the other side of the stage. Okay. Me, obviously, having read it and that, who would I deem the most important? The most important would be the, uh, the Phantom of Truth. Well, he, you know, he, he he's getting... He's heralded the King in Yellow. Well, yeah, you know, he's getting a shot. <laughs> okay. Uh, can I have a group luck roll when, uh, as you decide to aim at him? <laughs> That's uh -oh. me, then, isn't it? Lois? I have three. I you only have three? Yeah. But then it's you. Uh, nope. Okay. This was the big one that you really wanted to pass. Um, <clears throat> you can take your pot shot at him. So, Dr. Gross, make your roll. Well, it's not going to do anything, is it? So... Oh, it, it will get his attention. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> um, hmm. Well, it's a hard. Okay. Probably uh, a hard because... Right. Uh, the bullet smashes into what you think is his face and ricochets off the porcelain mask. At that point, this thing just turns and looks at you and you realise, yeah, this isn't a mask. It wears no mask. Can you give me a sound roll? Oh, well. Yay. I already low sound. Um, I failed. <laughs> All right, a failure to see the Phantom of Truth is 1d6. Not the worst thing in the world. Uh, four. Okay, not enough to drive you temporarily nuts. This is a good thing. Yep, wearing you down this a little further. Yes, for a person who's already low. <laughs> <laughs> Right, uh, because you've got his attention, technically the Phantom has dex of 90, uh, so the, that, the Phantom is going to leap in with uh, his response to you. Uh, he is just going to uh, look at, uh, say, he turns to look at you and then just gestures with his hand like this. Uh, can you give me an opposed power roll, please? Mm -hmm. May the uh, may the dice gods be in your favour. No, oh, uh, another um, one one off an extreme. Do you want to spend it? Yeah, I've got all the luck in the world. To be fair, right? Because I got a hard, and at that point you would need to then compare uh, compare your stats. You haven't got power one hundred. So uh, you are able to resist something that you you feel trying to literally erode you from within that would as if someone had pulled the plug on the very essence of your life itself and would have drained you dry and that that was done with just the wave of a hand. Yeah, let that sink in for a moment. All right, that was on deck 65. No, anyone else on 65? Going once. Going twice. In which case, I go twice. I've got two guys on deck 65. All right. Uh, we've got one that's going to be coming in at Davidge. Uh, the other one is going to be rushing across uh, to the Doctor, who just took a shot on the other side of the stage. I do not dodge. I mean, he didn't hit you either. So again, oh, there is just lots God. of weaving as you uh, both of you are thinking. Well, if you if you were competent, you'd be trying to go this way, and both of you missing entirely. Maybe and, they're not really trying to hurt me because you know stage actors. Yeah, <laughs> apparently, um, one going for Doctor Gross does hit, unless you want to dodge or fight back. Uh, Gross is feeling. Maybe trigger happy at this point, so he probably will fight back. You can fight back with a gun, sure. Yeah, let's just 
Like you have to get a better degree of success than them. <laughs> um, well, I've got a regular, but I, I, I can. I also have a regular. As you said, you've got all the luck in the world. Do you want to spend it to then to, uh, to get a hard and success? I will spend for twenty points of luck. <laughs> Who needs luck in the uh, in a big showdown like this? Right. Um, in which case, you can roll damage. So that'd be a d10, I think, for your for your gun. Yes. One point of damage. Ah, okay. That is not obviously enough to trigger a con check. Just keeping a track of hit points here. So 65, 65. Right. Anyone on 60? Okay, we have a big gap between uh, between folks here. Uh, 55. Davage, you'll start casting. Yay. Yeah. Right. As you said those magic words, you haven't used any of this stuff yet. Give me that hard power roll to see if you can actually activate the spell for the first time correctly. Mom power roll. Oh, no. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, it's got to be hard. Yep. I got a forty-seven out of seventy, so I have to spend twelve points mm -hmm. uh, in order to get hard, and I'll do it. All right. In which case, you oh no. The... That also makes me now the lowest as far as luck goes, because I'm at ah. two. You, you've had your big one that was to see whether the phantom had possessed the actor. So you activate uh, Cloak of Flame. And I, uh, it will, la I've already rolled some of this. It'll last um, 11 rounds. Uh, it costs me 12 magic points, which yeah. leaves me with two. Of course, does this have any magic points in it? That yes, it I does. Use it has 12 after having killed Constance. So and yes, you can I'll, use it because you've got it. I'll, I'll use that instead. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it does 1d6 sanity points damage. I yep. took five. Um, okay. Its description yep. is, I am wreathed in weaving glittering sparks that drag a luminous trail through the air and flicker white hot. Uh, and within that, I rise several inches off the ground like a ballet dancer. Yeah. And uh, it, it, I am able to strange. use it to throw flames at people. Although I imagine that that's on the second round. Yeah, that would be after you've activated attacking. it. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is that viewing the cloak in action costs one stroke, one D3 sanity points. So everyone can give me a sand roll after seeing Davidge suddenly goes, oh, shit, this is the stuff we saw. <laughs> that, well, uh, I'm, w I'm wondering if it distracts any of the audience from their mesmerism. At the point where wrong. they are no... No, but I failed. it also in it also doubles my movement speeds speed. So one d three. Yep, yeah, on a fail, it's one d three. Okay. Take two. Everybody wanted to see damage okay. flaming. Yeah. And success. Success is just one. So yeah, yeah this, this is exactly what you saw Aurora Williams use to uh, before she tried to dive through the fireplace. That, uh, and yeah. it super hurts. Oh, yeah, it hurts you. But it, it doesn't hurts, do me damage, it but you. it hurts like shit. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so there's, there's a few people around here that, uh, especially with the uh, with the cultists that you've got, that they have no idea about anything connected with Cthulhu, so this is as much of a shock to them as it is to the rest of you. <laughs> Not to me. Yeah, so, so you, you, you've seen this before. You know what books he's been reading. All right, that was on 60. That was 55. Oh, 55, sorry. Uh, anyone else on 55? I'm at 52. All right, you go two points before the other uh, before the other guards. So. Uh, now that the, 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 the combination of 
flying, flaming Davidge and Jean-Pierre above on the painted balustrade. I kind of feel as though center stage is under control. I think I'm going to... I'm, I, uh, is there a fire axe on the brick wall nearby? I, I will give you a fire axe, yeah. It's 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 a theater in the early twentieth century, after all, or late nineteenth. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to have to fire axe, and I'm going to go to the players in the wings. Mm -hmm. Just and you know they're probably looking at the stage, so I'm going to take the one in the rear first, and just try to cleave through the uh, at the axis between their shoulder and neck. All right, I'll give you that. Uh, give me a fighting. It's technically fighting axe. Uh, to use the fire axe uh, as a skill, which I believe starts at 15%. Mm, that's a pity. What's your fighting brawl? Uh, I'm uh, 25 base. It's not, it's not over 50, so that's, uh, it doesn't give you a... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? There's a, there's the thing that gives you increases in yeah. skills if it's yeah, cross-compatibility. Uh, cross All right. Well, I rolled a 29... So, but at 15, uh, I mean, how little damage can one possibly do with a fire axe at close range, I guess, is the question, whether I want to spend, if it was four points, I would certainly spend, but 15 or 14 seems like a lot. I'm just trying to find where fire axe is. Oh, here we go, wood axe. Um, it'd be a 1d8 plus 2 plus damage bonus, so it would be a fairly palpable hit. Axe a question. <laughs> But that's at the that's at the fifteen, so I'd have to spend fourteen. Yeah. Uh, all right, I'll do it once at least. It's a pretty good roll. Pity to waste it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, sorry. What was the one d eight, one d ten? One d eight plus two plus damage bonus. Damage bonus. Six. Plus two plus zero, so eight. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, uh, eight is still going to be a fairly palpable hit, so that's yeah. going to be. Uh, it's going to be bad for the morale in the company, I can say. It. Look at the nails. Yeah, yeah it's him. The guy that you take, he don't you don't think you've killed him, but you've you've seriously messed up his day. Um he collapses onto the floor and he's very much unconscious. And at that point probably bleeding out with the uh with the fairly heavy wound he's just taken. Right, that was fifty two. So fifty. I've got one guard left up uh, standing at this point. Oh, that hasn't acted. So no one else on 50? All right. Um, I think he is going to rush over to the guy that's just uh, wielded the axe. As that's uh, pretty much right by where it, right by where you are. So do you want Last. to try and dodge or fight back with the axe? Given my axe skill, I think I'll be dodging. Okay. Oh, I rolled an eight. Uh huh. Oh, that's about fifty-four points better than he rolled. So, <laughs> so yeah, sixty-two. So, which is a definite swing and a miss. And as anyone else left in the round at that point, I think I... everyone. Oh, the the captain goes hello <laughs> down here at the bottom. What 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 does the captain wish to do? Uh, the captain is going for the actors. So, uh. Captain Oswald, he's a he's a bit of a powerhouse because he's size eighty five. Uh, he wants to take the tiniest actor, probably Camilla or Casilda, right? Yeah, that'd be Camilla because she's uh, the the daughter. Yeah, he's gonna grab the actor and just two handed underarm throw right into the lake. Uh, okay, but, so um, that's a fighting brawl. Yeah, I'd say fighting brawl. Yeah, All right. uh, I'd say versus her strength. <laughs> Because of the size difference, may could I argue for a bonus die? Uh, I will give you the one. I'll give you the uh, the benefit that you are much right. bigger, so your fighting maneuver does get the bonus die. Yes. All right. Well, 
brought a 67 to an 07. I, I nowhere near that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> As, what, how does the song go? She flies through the air with the greatest of me, straight over the balcony, and there is there isn't a splash because the Lake of Harley is the rolling mists. There is just this ah goes off into oblivion. Jeez, and yeah, that's um that's an ex Camilla. <laughs> <Right. laughs> Uh, I believe then that is the bottom of the round. So we go up to the top, which would be 90. And we're, well, correction, Jean-Pierre, you have, and Dr. Gross. Um, if you have redded firearms, do you wish to use them? Yeah, I'm going to use mine. Okay. Uh, so that would put Jean-Pierre first and then Gross afterwards, because you uh, Jean-Pierre has the higher base decks. So, Jean-Pierre, who is your target? Um, so there's just Casilda left and, and no the Talbot. priest. Yeah. Yeah. And and also the Phantom of Truth. Well, that didn't go too well last time. So I'll pass on that one. Um, but then there's also the audience. Yes, they are. All I enraptured. Feel like, Is there any like lanterns in the audience that look like they're like gas powered? There, there are gas lamps that are turned down low that you can see going around the edges of the room. I think we're gonna shoot one of the, the like lines or the the gas lamps to see if I can set the audience on fire. Um, I give me a firearms roll. Because that's my job. <laughs> flame, flame is kind of his thing. <laughs> Oh, six. Uh, so there, is an, there is an almighty blam and a fireball erupts from one side of the, uh, one side of the room. It doesn't wash over the entirety of the audience, but it definitely sets, sets ablaze a good chunk of where they are. And yeah, the seats are ablaze. People are starting to burn as they still sit and watch what takes place on the stage in front of them. Right. Uh, next up was Dr. Gross. Um, assuming your dex plus 50 takes you over 90? Uh, yeah. Right. Go ahead. Your action is? Um, I still got the guy running towards me. Uh, well, fighting me. Um, Tried to. <laughs> I think I'm going to take a risk and shoot one of the other actors um the, the priest is it the priest who's still yes For the priest and the queen we'll go priest oh i'll shoot the priest okay right give me that firearms roll what could possibly go wrong um I'm spending the luck to succeed the roll. Okay. I need to spend five luck. I'm slowly going down in the luck. Give me damage. Eight points of damage. Uh, that's, uh, that's definitely a con check for poor Mr. Long. All right. Let's be left and con for him is 55 and I rolled 6 so okay, he takes the bullet like a champ he uh, he gets it square in the chest spins turns kind of holding his holding his chest and kind of wheezing he does so but he's not gone down very but theatrical a, of him yeah ah <laughs> oh, oh, mortal <laughs> wound <laughs> That's uh, demonstrated by Davidge. Maybe this is why he didn't get much of a uh, much of a career in the West End after all. Ham acting. Mm. Thou it's, hast utterly it. shot me. <laughs> <laughs> is this a bullet I see before me? Oh shit! It is. <laughs> I, I think then the next is going to be the Phantom. Now. George hasn't made the uh, hasn't made the mistake of going for him again, which is a which is a good move. 
I think he is going to E mini minus C. You've only have one other person that's well, actually is George again though, that you've you're the only other person to attack someone. Because uh, Pierre has gone for uh, went for a guard and dropped marble on him, not a named actor. And Casilda hasn't been touched yet. Uh, give me a luck roll, Mister Mister Doctor Gross. Let's see if he does target you again or not. <laughs> <laughs> Once I was above a in the highs. Yeah. Yes. It. Twenty-six out of twenty-six. Oh, there you go. Right. Um, he, apparently, the uh, the Phantom does not seem to uh, see the point in targeting the same person twice in a row. So, at the minute, he does not act. He just stands there and watches with this mo emotionless mask, watching proceedings unfold before him. So, next would be uh, Jean-Pierre's shot. Uh, I think it's the guards on 70 apiece. So, for once, it um, missed me. Yeah. Yes, the one one of them had been taken out in the last round by the uh, by the falling marble. The other one missed entirely. Right. Uh, do we want to pause for a second? Having just seen the uh, the chat, this might go on for a little while longer. Do we potentially want to pause it here? Well, uh, well, no. Um, uh, Alex has got to go. Yeah, so I what, work. yeah. What I'm thinking is, do we stop it here and then pick up next time to wrap up? And it would be a shorter session and kind of maybe do some of the potential uh, lead up into meat trade. Can everybody play the twenty twenty second? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that works. Uh, twenty twenty ninth is hot Thanksgiving. Most of us will yeah, be here. Got that. And I, I'm, Alex, I'm your game to... starts on the sixth. So, on the sixth, right. yeah, okay. So we'll have a short game next week and do a transition, and and uh, yeah, and that's good before break. So what's yeah, that? Yeah, great. Yeah, this helps because I needed to go like twenty minutes ago. Okay, and just say something. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to. I was trying to see if I could wrap things up, but this might go a little longer. Uh, okay. Combat in, the, the in, bane of time. In which Our case, players included yeah. Max Meltzer, Josh Harwood, Alex Sun, David Gasway, and myself with Matthew Sanderson as the Keeper of Arcane Lore. We have a Discord server where you can chat with other members, you can set up private games, and you can learn the finer arts of gameplay and game mastering. We provide audio-only versions of our shows free for you to download from Spotify, Podbean, or iTunes. Support for the show is provided by our patrons who are listed in the closing credits. If you would like to show us your appreciation, please visit our Patreon page listed in the description, or you can use the thanks button just below the screen. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel and punch the bell icon for updates on our latest shows. And leave us some comments. We enjoy reading them and answer any questions you might have. This is Tom Braley, together with all the members of our gaming club, inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure into the universe of H.P. Lovecraft and the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. Until next time, good luck, good gaming. <laughs>